From my previous videos, you'll know that the Fourier transform approximates the signal by a sum of sines and cosines. The only difference with the wavelet transforms is that you approximate a signal using a sum of short-lived waves like the one that you see here. This short wave is called a wavelet, and there are an infinite number of different wavelets. They are characterized by having what's called compact support. This just means that the signal doesn't last forever. Another characteristic of a wavelet is that the area underneath the curve must be zero. This is so that the energy is equally distributed in the positive and the negative directions. If we take a wavelet transform of a straight line, like x equals 1, we expect the result of 0. If the areas were not the same, the wavelet transform of x equals 1 would have uh, a positive or negative value. Let's look at the Fourier transform again. Remember that for the Fourier transform, we are simply multiplying the signal by an analyzing function which is a bunch of sinusoids. Similarly, for the wavelet transform, this setup is still the same, but instead we are multiplying the signal by a wavelet analyzing function. Both functions transform a signal, which is a function of time. However, the Fourier transform outputs coefficients which correspond to frequency, while the wavelet transform outputs a 2 by 2 matrix of coefficients, which are identified by their scale and translation. This results in a three-dimensional plot of amplitude as a function of scale and translation, which looks something like this. So we know that the Fourier transform outputs amplitude as a function of frequency, but how do we make sense of translation scale? Translation is easy. It's simply shifting the wavelet forward in time as we analyze the entire signal. You can think of scales much the same way you think of scales in music class. A scale is when you play notes in either increasing or decreasing pitch. Similarly, we take our wavelet and stretch it out for lower frequencies or compress it for higher frequencies. Very importantly, notice how when we stretch out the wavelet for the lower frequencies, the length of the wavelet increases. That means that at lower frequencies, we become less accurate at identifying the time at which a particular low frequency occurs. Conversely, the higher frequency wavelets will have better localization in time because they are much shorter. One more thing to note on this slide that can be confusing, a higher scale actually refers to a wavelet that is stretched out, whereas a low scale refers to a more compressed wavelet, which in turn means a high frequency wavelet. Wavelets are utilized to tackle, tackle the problem of frequency and time domain resolution. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle states that you cannot be both extremely accurate about location and time, and also location and frequency. Here I've drawn what are so-called Heisenberg boxes. For the high frequency wavelets, which have very compact support, we are able to achieve high resolution in time but the trade-off is that we get low resolution in frequency. The Heisenberg boxes must maintain the same area, so as we go to low frequencies, we have less resolution in time, but more resolution in frequency. Some scientists say that our brains use something like wavelets to interpret music. In music class, you learn that as you ascend in pitch, your frequency doesn't increase linearly. Rather, every time you increase in octave, you're doubling the frequency. This is because at higher frequencies, you're not able to resolve frequency as accurately. On the opposite side of the spectrum, this is also why we often play low frequency notes on the bass clef for longer duration. Think about how often you've played 16th notes on the very low end. Almost never. Okay, back to wavelets. Compare this with the Fourier transform, where we have no resolution in time, but very high resolution in frequency. There exists a windowed Fourier transform, which tries to mitigate some of this by trading off some resolution in frequency to achieve resolution in time. Like I mentioned, the wavelet transform works much the same way as a Fourier transform, where we are finding the correlation between a signal shown in blue and an analyzing function shown in red. Take a random signal in time. We can take an analyzing function, the wavelet, and translate the wavelet in time so that it encompasses the entire signal, multiplying each point of the signal in the region with a point on the wavelet. 
Once we have done this, we can then scale the wavelet so that we can so that so that the it is wider and then once again we would translate throughout the entire signal multiplying at each point this is how the wavelet transform works like i said there are an infinite number of vanishing moments but one way we use to differentiate the different types of wavelets is by its number of vanishing moments the kth moment of a function f is defined by the integral of the function multiplied by its variable to the power of k, and the kth moment vanishes if this integral is zero. The implications of this can be a little difficult to understand, but essentially a wavelet with a higher number of vanishing moments is more complex and is better able to accurately represent a complex signal. The disadvantage of having more vanishing moments is that it results in longer support. Also, as the number of vanishing moments increases, the polynomials up to that order will no longer be identified by the wavelet. So for a wavelet with a vanishing moment, with only one vanishing moment, we are able to respond to all the signals in yellow, but not a function of constant value. With a wavelet of a two vanishing moments, we no longer identify linear signals. Finally, with a wavelet that has three vanishing moments, we no longer identify quadratic signals. A related aspect of wavelets is its regularity. Wavelets with low regularity create jagged re representations of the signal that you're trying to analyze. With wavelets of higher regularity, we get smoother representations of the function. The more vanishing moments you have in your wavelet, the higher the regularity. The last thing to know when you're deciding which wavelet to use is, is its selectivity and frequency. When we do the Fourier transform, we are very selective in frequency because we are used for each analyzing function, we're only identifying one frequency. However, in wavelet transforms, we encompass a range of frequencies in that little beat. So if you want a lower range of frequencies, you need to be more selective. However, remember the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. The more selective wavelet you have, the less compact support. That sums up my introduction to wavelets. In the next video, we'll talk about how to do the discrete wavelet transform using the Haar and Dubecci wavelets.